Hello, my name is Shaji Kumar. I'm a professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic. I am part of the myeloma team here at the clinic who takes care of patients with multiple myeloma and related diseases. So multiple myeloma is a cancer of a certain type of white blood cells. Now, we all have several different types of white blood cells. The, the common function of white blood cells is to um, try and uh, attack the various infectious organisms that can uh, invade the body. Now, the particular type of uh, white, cell, uh, white cells that are responsible for multiple myeloma are called plasma cells. Um, the, com the function of plasma cells is to make proteins called antibodies which helps our body fight infections. The reason why patients develop multiple myeloma is not well known at this time. However, we have learned a lot about this particular cancer and we realize that multiple myeloma is probably not a single type of cancer but a collection of different types of cancers, all of which affect the plasma cells. So the triggers that makes the plasma cell cancerous may be different, um, particularly the genetic abnormality that initiates the development of cancer may be different in the different types of myelomas. Given the changes that have happened in this disease in the past decade, it is important that uh, patients with multiple myeloma see a specialist who deals with this disease more often. It is not necessary that all the treatments have to be done by a specialist, but it is good to have a specialist at least take a look at uh, the characteristics of the disease and formulate a treatment plan that which can be then carried out in collaboration with the primary hematologist who in most of the time would be much closer for the patient and logistically easier. There's approximately 20,000 patients diagnosed in this country each year with this particular cancer. Patients with multiple myeloma are living a lot longer than what they used to 10 or 15 years ago. In fact, the survival of patients with myeloma have more than tripled in the past 10 years. Now, there are several reasons for this. We are using autologous stem cell transplantation for treating multiple myeloma much more uniformly. In addition to that, and probably more important than that, there are several new medications that have been introduced for treatment of patients with multiple myeloma. Now what has happened in this disease is a combination of the introduction of new therapies as well as a better understanding of the biology of this disease. We have a better understanding of which patients are likely to do well with this diagnosis and which patients need particular attention because their myeloma is aggressive. To this extent, we have identified several genetic abnormalities that can be seen in the multiple myeloma cells, which helps us to identify those patients ahead of time, right at the time of diagnosis. Now, these particular type patients need a special attention, especially in terms of the type of treatments we would like to use. We have developed very detailed treatment strategies for patients with multiple myeloma based on the particular risk category that we uh, put those patients in based on the genetic abnormalities that we can find. Some of this information is available on the web at the website um, msmart.org. This particular website has a lot of treatment details which we as a team continuously review and continue to update based on information as and when they become available. The treatment options in multiple myeloma, as I mentioned, have significantly changed. What has changed is the, in the introduction of two very effective class of medications. One of them is called proteasome inhibitors. And the first medication in that group of medications was a drug called bortezomib or Velcade. The other class of medications that have been introduced are what we call the immunomodulatory drugs. And the second class of drug have all been derived from a medication called thalidomide. Now, the thalidomide was something that has been around for a long time, but its use in myeloma was only discovered about 10 or 12 years ago. Now, the, both these classes of drugs are very effective in treating multiple myeloma. And we use them uh, either alone or in combination with other drugs, in both in patients with myeloma that have recently been diagnosed, as well as in myeloma that have relapsed after prior treatments. Now, all these medications do come with some side effects, but overall these medications are reasonably well tolerated. So compared to um, 10, 12 years ago, when autologous stem cell transplantation and a particular drug called melphalan were the mainstays of treatment for multiple myeloma. Today, 
we have a huge armamentarium of drugs that can be used for treating this disease. Now this includes the drugs that I just mentioned as well as two other drugs which were recently approved for treatment of multiple myeloma. The first drug is called carfilzomib or Kiprolis and this belongs to the class of medications called proteasome inhibitors which are similar to the bortezomib or Velcade. The second drug that was approved recently is called pomalidomide or pomalist which belongs to the group of immunomodulatory drugs and both these drugs have been shown to be quite effective in treating myeloma that have relapsed after previous therapies. Now in addition to this there are several other uh, clinical trials that are ongoing which are evaluating a whole host of very exciting drugs. Not only are these new drugs um, belonging to the same class of drugs that we have been using all these years but we also have several drugs that belong to totally different class of drugs. Now this is a very important point. Multiple myeloma cells eventually become resistant to the different therapies that we use. None of the therapies that we use today in the clinic are curative. That means this myeloma will eventually come back and the cells will eventually become resistant to the medications that we are using currently. So it is very important that we continue to develop new drugs especially drugs that work through different mechanisms so that they can overcome the resistance mechanisms that these myeloma cells have developed while they are being exposed to these currently available drugs. Again going back to the point of being seen by a specialist also uh, import is important from the point of view of um, having access to new clinical trials. Now a center like Mayo Clinic which specializes in rarer types of cancers especially cancers like multiple myeloma will have clinical trials with several of these new drugs available uh, for use um, uh, in, uh, in patients who have um, relapsed after the currently available treatments. Even if uh, patients are not eligible for going on a clinical trial uh, the a, a second opinion will allow the patient to get the opportunity to consider alternative uh, treatment regimens that uh, may not have been considered or combination of um, therapies that have previously been treated which could still uh, be of benefit even though the patients have stopped responding to one or other of these individual drugs. We will have access to new drugs through clinical trials for treating patients with multiple myeloma. We will also have uh, increasing numbers of tools available in the clinic to get a better sense of which patients are going to do better. It is important um, that we continue with uh, our ongoing research in this disease so that we can continue to identify why some patients with multiple myeloma do not do well so that we can develop new strategies for treating these patients. To this end, we have a large amount of research that is ongoing at Mayo Clinic uh, where we study how patients have done so far. We obtain uh, blood and bone marrow samples from patients with multiple myeloma at various stages of their disease to better understand why patients develop multiple myeloma in the first place, but also why multiple myeloma becomes resistant to therapies and devise new ways of treating this particular disease. It specifically going into the uh, various treatment options that we have, we uh, take particular pride in trying to um, understand how new drugs may develop, in, uh, may help patients with multiple myeloma by looking at these new drugs in the laboratory against uh, myeloma cell lines as well as patient myeloma cells. Now those drugs that we uh, find, find to be very promising in the laboratory, we try to take them forward into clinical trials both small clinical trials specifically looking at various stages of the disease that we do uh, at the, uh, in the clinic but also large scale clinical trials where we are comparing these new therapies um, against uh, older therapies. Now clearly these large trials cannot be done in one institution so we partner with other institutions as well as take part in large cooperative groups where these large trials can be done by enrolling large number of patients and answering critical questions as to what drugs hold promise for the future. So clearly the, uh, the paradigm has changed, patients with myeloma are living longer, there are more treatment options and it's continuing to improve and I am sure the day where multiple myeloma becomes a chronic disease isn't too far away and hopefully the, the time where we can 
uh, say that we will be able to cure this disease should shortly follow thereafter.